Hello, 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 beautiful alchemist. Welcome to part two <laughs> of the Light of Days conversation here on Reiki Radio. So if you haven't heard part one of this conversation, of course, you can go back in the archives. It was just uh, released yesterday. And I would definitely recommend listening to that before continuing on with this if you haven't heard it yet. But in any case, here in part two, you will hear what happened once DeAndrea made that big move across the country. You'll also hear what supported Amy in her healing and transformation, including working with a coach. And we will share with you what we all have upcoming. So again, um, you know, it's always amazing to me anyway, that we all get to gather here in this space. And I hope that no matter where or how you're listening to the podcast, whether you're on the couch or doing dishes or driving your car, whatever it is, I hope that in all of the interviews, really, you feel like you are there, present, sitting amongst friends, and maybe you even talk back <laughs> at the podcast. But um, yeah, I just... I'm always so thankful for the chance to be able to sit and have these conversations because I know that while all of our journeys are unique and while all of our healing uh, processes may be very unique, there is so much that we can relate to woven throughout each other's stories. And that's really the purpose of these podcasts, right? So um, yeah, I hope you enjoy part two. And I can't wait to hear what comes up for you through this conversation. But in any case, remember that you can connect with Amy through her website, which is amysagereiki.com. You can connect with DeAndrea through her website, which is asideofself.com. And you can connect with me through my website, theenergeticalchemist.com. Enjoy part two of the conversation. I will see you on the other side. Okay, everyone, welcome to part two of this juicy real friend conversation with Light of Day. I'm here again with Amy, DeAndrea, and in the last episode, we were talking a lot about our healing phases and cycles, so we'll pick up with that. Um, I want to hear about, you know, your process once you moved and um, just anything that's coming up for you around what we've been talking about, D. But I have to say, it's been interesting listening to both of your stories as well, because even though we're friends and we all talk, you know, just in different conversations, you share different bits and pieces. So some of what both of you have shared is like the first time hearing it, like that piece of it or that perspective of it. So it's it's very interesting. Um, but yeah, if you could share with us, my love, uh, what it has been like since you moved because that's kind of where you left us off in your story um I think when you hit um the place of like uh, recreating who you are um and you're in a place that you know no one and no one knows you mm -hmm. it becomes the blankest of blankest canvases right and as much of an introvert as I may be, I consider myself really kind of down the middle. Like I'm extroverted with my people. Right. I'm introverted, introverted if I don't, like if I'm in a crowd of people, like you're never going to see me on the table. You know what I mean? I'm like that type of person. So to be in a place where, I literally knew no one. My sister does live here. I moved with her. Um, and I have a friend from San Diego who lives out here also. Actually, and then three more people came too. So weird. <laughs> anyway. Um, I think I learned that I like myself. And that I can be with myself. And that as much as I love learning about people, it 
pushed me into this place where all I had to learn about was myself. And um, the amount of disdain that I have for <laughs> the meaning of the word, like just this, the word mediocre um, is very uh, distasteful to me. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's like one of the most unattractive words. Thank you. It's one of the most unattractive words to like be mediocre, right? And I realized that like as I'm sitting and like learning myself and looking at like these situations that I had been in before and how I responded in said situations and I, I studied myself. You know what I mean? It was like a, a this case study of who I was presenting myself to be in this past life that I had lived. And I think when you allow yourself in that space, that's when you start unlocking these little doors of um, an elevated version of that person, right? Like, oh, you pass this level, like you see you're dumb or you see like you you know what I mean like you acknowledge all of the dark spaces and when you do that hi, oh hi I can see you therefore you're not something that's just seeping into my existence I know you are here if I call on you then you're present but since I know you are here I ain't calling on you you know what I mean like it's like that that not knowing I, I started school and I'm in class with a lot of young kids. And, and that is not a good place to learn yourself. <laughs> I thought I was going to be feeling old, right? Like feeling old, like the old lady sitting in the class. And what I realized was, oh my goodness, I didn't feel old. I felt refined, right? I felt like I understood more of what was going on around me. And, and it was really um, impressive for me to see the outside of young people in this capacity, like so unawares, like so, and I was there, we've all been that 18 year old, but it looked so different to me as a more refined person, you know, like, man, I'm sure I used to look like that, man, they have so much to learn, man, you know what I mean? Like it, it also, it just, it just, I just, since being here and being with myself and and working on myself and really understanding how I move, how I read, how I feel, how I experience like everything, I think is um, one of the gifts from the great tragedy. Yeah. You know, I think when you hit the ground that hard, like when you fall that far, it gives you this chance to like pick up like all these tokens to, you know what it's like? It's like playing a video game and then like you spent all these tokens like on the way and then you die and then you start over from the beginning, you get all your tokens again. <laughs> like it's kind of like, it's kind of like, okay, like you get to, you've been up certain mountains before. So you know where the little tokens that you missed the first time up. I know y'all play these video games. Yeah. Um, you, you get to find like, go, I remember it was one under this mushroom, boop. You know what I mean? And you start like hitting these things and moving more quickly into yourself. You know what I mean? Oh, I get to pick this. I want to be this this time. It's a refreshing, scary. It was a long I have never felt lonely, but I really felt alone a lot of times. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it wasn't that I was needing someone there. It was that I was missing someone who wasn't, and I was wishing someone was. You know, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't need it. It wasn't like, oh, my God, I was, you know, distraught and just feeling like I would accept anything. No, I ain't one of them. Like, it was like, man, I wish I had. I wish I had. But I know I will. You know what I mean? So I think that was the hardest part with the move was the aloneness 
right? That wishing that you had somebody who knew you. And if, I lived with my sister. And I'm going to tell you, like, when you have a partner, when you sleep next to somebody for 14 years, like, there is this knowing, this comfort, this blanket, this something that you get by just sheer presence, that when it's not there abruptly like that, the the overexposure that you experience is really something that I cannot articulate to you unless you have felt so overexposed. And I think that's why, you know, people get addicted to healing. Because like when you deal with the overexposure where everything is just out for the world to see and to know and to you being so emotionally raw and so mentally unavailable, all of those things come together and you're just like trying to be in a safe, quiet, dark space where they can't get to you. You know what I mean? You remind me of, um, I was talking to another friend just a few days ago and she had um a loving relationship but you know it had its its tough parts it was one of those relationships that teach you by like gut punching you and you still cling on to it and you know you come out on the other side feeling really beat up and battered right and um now she's in a relationship where it feels much different although it's still triggering for her her own healing and being very reflective it just has a different quality to it and I was talking to her I said you know it sounds like the first situation was like a volcanic type of healing and now it's like you're coming down to the river for a different texture of healing and you remind me of with what you said like even in tarot how the after the tower is the star and it's funny because you all know I at well Right before COVID, I started working on the deck, but obviously sidestepped it. But tarot was my go-to too, like in that space of like hermiting and not really wanting to converse with anyone because I really didn't know what to say. I mean, I just knew I felt some kind of way, but I didn't even want to try to articulate it, quite frankly. So tarot literally became like my mirror, my friend, my counselor, my, all of the things. And I was working very closely with my guides to, you know, reconcile what I was going through, but with what you share, I think it's a good reminder for everyone. Like, even when we're in the thick of things and it can feel like hell. And the last thing on your mind is like, even almost being able to envision how you'll come out on the other side. It's interesting how these things really do change you in such, per or they have the capacity to, I and mean, we can resist it. And that's like a whole nother episode, right? But some of these moments that are so earth shattering, they really do have this space that could potentially change you in a phenomenal, phenomenal way. And like you all know, I'm not going to go into the detail of it, but even during that time too, I went through... <laughs> Oh, I had a fun little experience, right? I thought so. And it ended up being like, whoa, it was like, I, wow. Talk about hitting the ground, right? But it really was one of those things that helped me reclaim my playfulness and recognize and remember an aspect of myself that was good that I had tucked away and didn't even realize I had sidestepped from. And it's often these eruptions that reveal so much of um, the parts of us we forgot or just haven't gotten to know yet. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you about that, like, because you've, I think we've all shared a lot <laughs> in this conversation. What do you recognize about yourself now? Like how has everything that you've shared and in these last few years, what are some significant changes that you recognize in yourself and I just want to say from a friend on the outside looking in, this whole time I've been thinking of how differently you both communicate about who you are and what it is even that you do. That's a very interesting thing to see how much even that has changed. Who are you talking to? Both of you. Me? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> I want to. 
I wanted to say something about what you said earlier um, about holding space and like, you know, being there with your family and, um, you know, sometimes the strong ones, um, the, the helpers and the healers, um, and healing, I mean, uh, by hand or mouth, right. Um, that the ability to make someone feel better. Yeah. We can kind of become, um, looked at like we don't need that right you know and I remember all the phone calls and texts that I used to get and um you know how are you um you know and then some people like would just I had a few people that the whole time checked on me and then everyone else you know just expected that I remember my one friend's like you strong just like that. And I, I, I really encourage people to think about what it takes for somebody to be looked at as strong. What do they have to show you for you to consider them as a strong person, right? How do they test the car to consider how much it can take? It's a lot of crash dummies and Mm -hmm. it's a lot of cars that's hitting a lot of walls, right? Yeah. Like it's the same thing with people. Like, can, can you imagine if you're looking at someone as if they are strong, that they have possibly endured a lot? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, I, like, they, you're talking about holding space, and I'm like, as a healer, we don't chant our griefs. We figure out where to go to heal them, to, to, to become better, right? To become better, like, the whole point is to become better we're not, i'm not gonna go join a, a we all lost our husband group not that you cannot find healing there but for me as a person i know what to be in someone else's grief feels like and i don't want to go spitting mine while everyone else spits theirs and we sit in there holding hands kumbaya and in grief for me as an extrasensory person that isn't healing So I think oftentimes for us, because you said, you know, and to be honest, I didn't want to talk about it. We don't find healing in that. (laughs) You know what I mean? We know it's like we're, we're, we're speaking, we're making it more alive. We're giving it more life. And this is not to say, don't talk about your stuff. I think you should get it out. But I'm saying sometimes you need to make sure you need to acknowledge if it is, um, if you're dwelling in your grief. You know, if if that dwelling space, if that that I have other people who are as sad as me space is giving you something in that moment, if it's really healing you or if it's just a narcotic that you're finding some solace in in the moment, if it's an escape for you. Uh, what did you say about <laughs> I wrote down? Well, I have to say, because like, no, it's true. And but. You know, it's funny because it makes me think of like the importance of also recognizing in your life or, you know, seeking it out, like who's the right ear, because part of it, a lot of times I keep a lot of things to myself. If the ears that I know are the right ears aren't available for whatever reason. And so I will hold it until I can get to the right ears. You know what I mean? And so that's another thing, too. I mean, I think a lot of times. I don't think people even think about how much it can set us back in our healing. Sometimes sharing in the space that isn't the best space for sharing (laughs) because everybody doesn't hold the mirror the same. And it can be very disappointing when you're in those kind of spaces, like to say, like if someone said to you, like, oh, you're strong. What? Like, listen, that'll make me shut all the way down. Right. That was the wrong. (laughs) The And, and I want to be clear with just how you just did it. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you're strong. You, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, the yeah, same thing with survivor. You know, like the, the word survivor gets thrown around so much, so much survivor, survivor. And, you know, I remember this girl in Kansas City. Um, you know, she was abducted and had bad things done to her, right? And my cousin's like, oh my God, you know, she's such a survivor. And I'm like, don't call her that. 
it is a triggering word because in order to have to have survived something somebody went through some real shit you know what i mean like if you are if you are basically casting her horrible moment her tragedy as something else and it's not allowing that tragedy to stay that for her you know what i mean and i don't and and that doesn't sound how i want it to sound but you know what i'm saying like if you're constantly calling someone a survivor you're constantly throwing tragedy in their face and that's just the reality of that you know she just wants to be who she was who she is before this happened and though that will always be a part of her she doesn't want to be constantly acknowledged as that you know what i mean as having survived that you know what i mean i think we i think words are so powerful no matter what it is we are saying and i think like that no matter what it is we are saying part really needs to be emphasized because it is that's such a, a big thing too is like even we do it to ourselves identifying so much as the experience rather than recognizing the experience for what it is and what it may have done to us, you know, whatever, however it influenced us, changed us, whatever it may be. But we do have a tendency to over identify with the experience itself and making it become who we are. Yeah. It's yeah. See now this is like, I'm like, we have 10,000 things we could talk about. (laughs) (laughs) But what was your question? I'm sorry. My question oh, wait, was before like, you go on has... from um, grief though, hold on one more thing. Okay. It's interesting. There's when you guys talk about, um, you know, dwelling in it and stuff like that, there's a woman I met with that came in for a Reiki session and you know, she wasn't really connecting with her grief groups and stuff. And she said to me, I just want to be able to find joy in grief. And I thought that was very interesting for her to say that because she was recognizing that she was having to go through this but she didn't want to stay in that feeling, but she still wanted to honor what she was going through, but still find joy in her life as she was going through it. So just wanted to share. I mean, I like that. Um, what you just said, it just reminded me of, again, like all the different layers and how things look so different for each of us. But I remember D being very um, vocal about her way of processing and how it varied from what people traditionally say, like there's this hard outline of like what grief looks like and what cycles you go through in grief and the stages and this and that. Um, We put a lot of boxes and restriction and supposed to around everything. And it's interesting because it, there are some people who will say F that box this is what I'm going through and this is what it looks like. And I don't care what you said it's supposed to be. Right. But there are some people where that can really hinder them. The idea that it's supposed to look a particular way. And then they're trying to find themselves in that thing rather than just seeing where they're at, you know? So I hope that a lot of that in this conversation will come through as well. I can see your head. Yeah. What's coming up for you, babe. I no, I'm I don't know what you can see on the side. I can see all three of us. So I'm like, yes. Like I didn't have to be well by now. Mm-hmm. And I and and I you and I spoke about this where I was feeling like I should be here. You know what I mean? And not to even be in a box, but just right. to be healed by now. Right. Mm-hmm. And what happened was I kept discovering I wasn't ready yet. And I would have to go and be like, I mean, is this just me being scared? But it wasn't. And I know that now because I'm in a hindsight state, <clears throat> but I wasn't, I wasn't ready yet. I had a few more things. And you realize that when you're dealing with grief in, on some level of, or loss on some level, that there's so many aspects to ourself that need attention. There's so many layers of our existence that need addressing that, yeah, I felt better in this thing that I was working on. But guess what happened? Once I got the key from this room and I went to the other room thinking I'm about to hit my exit. Nope. It was just another room that had to deal with something else that needed. I'm. We 
our jobs as us three, I'm pointing, um, we're heal here as healers, right? And whatever that word means to whatever it is, whoever it is that's listening, like to make somebody something better, right? To to help them create a space of being an elevated version of wherever it is that they are right now. That's our job, right? That's our purpose. That's how we like bond. We know that's what we're supposed to be doing. How do I look going out there? Even if I can give you the right information, right? And this is, this was me taking this horrible, you know, I've been climbing a mountain with somebody by my side for a very long time. And then as soon as you feel like you peek in, we just fall off the edge. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was my situation. And how do I make sense of that? You know what I mean? How do I make sense that me as a good person, and I state that claim as a fact, like me as a good, kind hearted, loving person, like why would I be put through the a drop off like that? I had something like this. Uh, there was something I needed to go down and get, right? I had something else to bring to to the mountain peak. I had to start over. There was some reason, right? And so I understood all these tears, all this aloneness, all this quiet time, all of all of the tears. Let me tell you, I could have drowned. I chose to swim. I chose to like do laps. I chose to have it be healing waters. I made that choice. I understood as a spiritual person right? This is no spiritual bypass, anything. I, I had, I understood God was in control at this point. Spirit was in control at this point. He was going to show me and I would not step foot back out until he said, okay, you can step back out. And so I was trying to force a line. I was trying to open doors. I was trying to just, I wanted to just be done already. You know, it's like, I wanted to like, oh, I just want to show me the thing. But it it was one moment, I think I said this to you, Rhonda, where I was like, oh my God, I felt like I haven't made any progress. Mm. I felt like I haven't moved anywhere. I haven't like done anything. And that's all because externally, no one has seen me. But I literally moved across the country. I have a whole human child. <laughs> I had to get in school and you get, you know, dental and Medicare, medical and, and move into a house. And you know what I mean? All these things, all these real mundane, regular life to exist on in the mm -hmm. United States things. Like I did all that and I had to take a moment like, damn, you're going to give yourself no fucking credit. That's you know what I mean? Like I it was crazy watching the way, I mean, you, yeah, <laughs> you were doing a and lot. Right. And in my mind, because I wasn't back in the world, right. I felt like, man, I, I haven't been seen for this long. I felt like I should have been further. Right. I felt like I should be. And no one was saying I should be. But people were messaging me. Are you going to um, are you taking clients again? Um, can you just do this for me? You know what I mean? And I'm like, is this the universe telling me it's time? You know what I mean? You get there's so much that like happens when you're in a state of rebirth you know what I mean when you're trying to come back and those contractions and you're not one of them quick laborers you know what I mean so but I have to point this out because you make this point and earlier uh, on the last podcast Amy mentioned the whole why part two like a lot of us go through something in life and we're like why me like why is this happening and when we step outside of that and see, well, what is really happening? Like, what am I really experiencing? And what is really coming up for me? All the things. But it's very important, I think, for people to recognize, because you mentioned, like, am I ready yet? The question for yourself, but even other people asking you if you're ready yet. But I think we entangle ready yet with our healing. And they're not one in the same, because there will be a point in your healing where no, you, you're not ready yet to get back out there. Right. And then there will be a point where you will be ready to get back out there, even though you're still going through your healing. 
And because we make them one in the same, a lot of people may feel or believe I'm not ready yet because I'm not done healing. Well, just because you're not done here, who's who is done healing? You know what I mean? Like, shit. we all heal in something at various oh. levels and various degrees. Okay, it's fine. But ready yet in healing, you have to like honor those as two different things. You may be ready to take some steps in a particular direction and still concurrently be healing, but you don't have to always look for because what is what is even enough what is even healed enough what comes up for your aims i think it's so true uh a lot of it too i think comes from you think you need to be in a certain place or you think you need to feel a certain way in order to be ready but really when is that ever going to happen like you just need to go do you know, you, uh, you you can be addicted to healing. Healing can be a very safe, quiet corner where you love getting rubbed on and taken care of by whatever, you know, just a blank healing um, experience. But you can, it's like, let me use a relationship as an example. Like you can be ready to be in another relationship because the relationship to you is going to make you feel better. You can heal and the 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 next stage of healing might actually be the relationship itself. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And then there's also the opposite of that where people don't want to heal. They just want to feel how they felt before when they had xyz yeah. and i think that it's wise to not throw one out with the other because it's <laughs> they are both a thing you know if i know that i'm coming back here to help people recreate right to help help you reconceptualize like what your life looks like if that is my purpose I can't go through what I just went through and say, just because I know the spiritual steps that I've experienced all, because then I don't have all the tools that I have that I'm about to help you fuck your shit, get it right. You know what right. I mean? That, so, so yes, if I'm a therapist, let's say, you want to know why they have a lot of problems? <laughs> Therapists, I mean, just stereotypically, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, because they deal with all your problems and they don't deal with theirs. I don't want to be that. And so when I said I wasn't ready, I mean, I wasn't ready to offer my, my dish wasn't finished. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's all it was. Like it just need a little bit more time in the oven. So yeah. get that little crispy in and it'd be super tasty for you. <laughs> you know, it was like that. So you just, there's just like, there's so many layers but that's why I think it's important for people to recognize those two pieces of that element for themselves, the healing part as a piece, but also the ready enough as a piece, because exactly to your point, some people will try to just bypass the healing and go right into how I want to feel. Okay. And then what? I mean, you know, and then people wonder why I'm having the same experience again and again, or they wonder why I can't seem to get out of this pattern or that's where people come up with the stories of I always experience this or I never experienced that. Well, what hasn't been addressed? What mm -hmm. is it within us that we need to create the change, the shift, the transformation about? So the question I was asking before, and I'll ask you now, Ames, is, you know, in this time, in this, obviously we've been doing this work consciously healing for over 10 yeah, years now. However, what is it that you've recognized in you as a significant yeah. change that maybe you weren't even expecting? Um, I think it's the constant realization of like, there's something new to understand. There's something new to understand about myself. There's another experience that's going to catapult you into another shift or another transformation. I think once I realize, I recognize in me too, that sometimes I need help to be accountable. So when I was going through this shift of coming back to Florida and realizing, oh, I'm going to have to do something with myself here. I 
I enlisted the help of a coach because I needed someone to talk to and that I I didn't want to go to anyone else because I just wanted to pay that person to listen to me <laughs> say what I needed to say and to vent about all this stuff. And it really helped. Like it really helped because that person, shout out to Sarah. I love her so much. She listened to me. She validated what I was going through. And then she kept pushing me to go forward, showing me that like my wings could open more if you just stepped outside your comfort zone some more. So I think the biggest thing for me was just recognizing in the healing process and just in life in general, like there's more to be had. And once you start learning more about your own divine self, you really can shift everything. You can shift your concept of time. You can shift your concept of your relationships with others. Um, You know, now dealing with triggers, you know, why am I being triggered? Why am I feeling this way? It's just a constant evolution that always has me feeling some sort of way, some sort of. Yeah. What about you, Dee? What changes have you noticed in you, even if it wasn't intended? The the responsibility of my purpose. You know, like when you... When you start looking at why you've been certain ways, um, why you've had certain fears why, um, you know, self-exposure being like such a big thing. I think I realized here by no, by being exposed to no one, you know what I mean? By being so underexposed that that the sun is just there, you know? And that our divine purpose for who we are is to be that son, right? Is to just be there being who we are. And I have um, been a cloudy day for a long time. You know what I mean? I've been a very, very underexposed and, you know, I was listening to something, God knows what. And this girl said something along the lines of, um, um, wow, that just left my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Literally that quickly. Um, she said something that made me feel like when you know what you are supposed to be doing and you don't do it and I feel like even though I went through this worst thing ever that I've been given so many gifts to become who I'm supposed to be you know like like here here's the baton it is now like your turn to go out and do what it is you are supposed to do the responsibility the weight of that like that knowingness that I was supposed to do something, that I was giving this, given this very difficult situation and forced to go through it and be led and guided through it the whole time. And in such a honestly safe and and, and, and protected space as I healed. And not everybody goes through a tragedy and they are offered the comfort to heal, right? Some people got to go back out and work because they got to live life. They got to, you know what I mean? And I was, mm-hmm. I was afforded in the worst of times protection in the mundanest of ways, right? Mm-hmm. So I can do my internal healing work that I needed to do. And there's always a give and a take. And I went down here. I collected all these treasures, Right. And now my job is to go out and feed them to the poor, right? It's to go out and share, it's to go out and make somebody else's day, right? I'll never forget, I had this vision of me walking around with a pocket full of seeds. And it has been 
an image in my mind for like the past year, because I'll never forget walking around with a pocket full of seeds, right? And that my mission is everywhere I go to toss some, right? to give somebody something to grow, to provide them some sustenance. And then what I realize is that you will have friendships where you're always tossing seeds, right? But they don't care to care for these seeds, right? There's no watering, there's no tending, there's no gratitude, there's no honoring of said seeds. And then you quit giving seeds out to this person. <laughs> but your mission is everywhere you go is to spread seeds, right? Is to populate, is to let know that I don't know, something was said to you. You heard something today. Somebody told you you was cute. Somebody laughed at your joke. Somebody said, oh my God, that's, you know what I mean? Somebody acknowledged you in some kind of way. All of those are seeds. And I think that, man, that that mindset, that thought, that vision that I was given really made me feel like, oh, that's the that's the mission. Go and give wherever you go. And when you do, you will always have, right? There will always be something growing around you to feed you. Mm -hmm. I mean, even with the image you gave, it's like, how could there not be, <laughs> you know, especially if you're like populating these. Populating. Everywhere. Yeah. It's um interesting. You also make me think of, and I think it's important for people to know as well that our healing and our processes, not only are there phases and stages that we go through, but it has many faces. So like when we started this conversation, we we're talking about how fortunately we all came together and we had, you know, our community, whatever, our own little circle <laughs> that we cultivated and that was part of our healing, but it wasn't just because we came together. Listen, we did rituals and we did all kinds of things and we experimented together, but we also did Reiki for each other, but we also laughed and we also would call each other just to vent. And we would also call each other, you know what I mean? I remember you guys came to the desert and we just had a friend weekend. So I just want to remind everyone as well, because some people think even their healing has to look like I have to be so rigid and you know doing reiki every day or i have to do this thing this one thing every day as you change and evolve so will your healing so will your practice and there will even be different cycles in your life where you just pop in and out of what will feed you the same thing isn't going to feed you every day and all the time so just keep in mind like your healing in of itself has a lot of different faces um I'm glad you guys are faces in my little healing pot, but it has been, I mean, it's been incredible when you think about all the ways. And I just want to point this out as well. In the beginning, I mentioned how, um, I think Reiki was a catalyst for all three of us in a lot of ways. And then Amy went in on crystals and the sound healing, but I forgot to mention Deandrea. <laughs> And he went all the way in into astrology. And again, like we all have the things that we're even drawn to individually, but how you even make that your own and how these different practices and teaches will live through you and not being afraid. Again, like I think one of the biggest things woven throughout our conversation is don't, don't get stuck in thinking your healing has to look like something or someone else's. I hope if nothing else Amen. gets that. <clears throat> that was, um, and you, you two know, I think that can be one of the biggest lessons of all is that know what you do. Yeah. Because it can like, it can be so this, this, I'm gonna call it world that we live in, but community, we'll say community, yeah. right? This, the healing community, um, it can really be hard. Let's even let's use astrology. It makes it easier. There are so many different ways to do astrology. Mm -hmm. And guess what? All of them can be right. How do you do it? Right? Same thing with reading cards. You'll see some people that read cards this way. Some people like everything has, if you're channeling information, like it is your voice. Like you are yeah. filtering that. Like you deliver that. And I think that's really important because it's really hard to find how to, let's say, even market 
what it is that you do. And Yolanda, you are also right. Energy work, in my opinion, from my experience, and I'm going to be blatant. This is my opinion. Yeah. Energy work is the 100% most important foundational part of spirituality. Know your shit. Know who you are, where you are, how you're feeling. Are you souring the room? Are you making the room brighter? Like, know, know your energy. You know what I mean? And I've been, my dad started teaching me astrology when I was six years old. And I am so glad that when I met you, um, I hadn't gone into astrology. I'm glad that I started with energy. I'm yeah. glad that I know how to shift energy. I'm glad that I know what my energy is. I'm, I'm glad that I have an awareness of all of the unseen things. Because what happens is when you go into other modalities like reading cards or doing astrology, I don't think you have the capacity, once again, my opinion, to be as good as holistically um, whatever as you can be if you don't know energy first, right? Because you can pull a card and it can say this word and you can know the book meaning, but that card may not be saying that to you, mm -hmm. right? When my when I had the premonition about my father in law, yes, the sun actually means our life force, right? But guess what? Spirit was showing me. Spirit was showing me his actual son. You know, he, it, his actual son's vitality was death, right? It was that was the blackness. Was my father in law standing in this sunny field, and the sun went black. His son, not his life force, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm human. So don't trust me. I feel no kind of way about misinterpreting that. I'm glad I got it wrong. I'm glad I didn't spend that time thinking that it was him, right? I'm, I'm, I'm glad. But what I'm saying is knowing energy helps you in those situations. It makes you not depend on an inanimate object. It makes you understand like, oh, but what am I feeling? Like, what is this telling me? I know this says the three of swords, but it might mean something else or, you know what I mean? Like knowing energy makes you whole. Like it makes you, it gives you this ability to understand like what is going on. Yeah. Right. And so I think like it's what you're saying is extremely important. Do one you right? Like if you have something you do, if you draw a picture and you, then the message comes to you through yeah. drawing a picture because you're an artist, that is your divination. Yeah. And nobody else is going to go draw that picture and say that it means exactly what it is that spirit is telling you it means. Trust your shit. Like, you Wait, know, like, I gotta stay with you say that. Hold on. There was something you just said. Shit. I know it was going to leave my mind. God dang it. Oh, D. Fuck. Oh, you hit something. I'm sorry. Go ahead, babe. It completely <laughs> just left my brain. Mm. Oh, well, one of the things with what you said is absolutely 100%. I feel like how is it even possible to know ourselves without knowing energy? To truly know ourselves, not even just ourselves, to truly even know and understand this planet this life this existence like how could you understand any of that without understanding um energy as well but i have to say this is one of the things um i plan to teach our oracle class not as extensive as the one i did this year but next year at some point um i'm also going to do reiki retreats and i'll talk to you guys about that offline because I have some ideas but um with the cards I'm just putting it out there for anyone who comes. I am going to try my best to get DeAndrea to do a module in the Oracle class because <laughs> look at her face. <laughs> do you remember Ames? So we used to all chat on this app called Marco Polo, where it's like video chatting, mm -hmm. conversations, whatever. And they were very much in the process of when I was working on the deck. And whenever I'd get a, a a sketch back from the artist, I would share it with them and we would talk. But DeAndre's translation of the cards 
when I tell you somehow, some way, we're going to make sure that she is a part of the next Oracle class, just so you know. Incredibly thoughtful and insightful and Mm -hmm. they're wonderful. You want to know what's funny about that is when Amy and I first got together and we were playing with the cards. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I was trying so hard to read these cards. You know what I mean? And I didn't know the meaning of them, but I was trying so hard to read the cards to the point where I just felt Wait, like just that as was a side note, she is not talking about my deck. She's <laughs> talking about years oh. before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When Amy and I for like years, yeah. years, mm-hmm. years. Like I just like I think I was just trying so hard to read the cards. Mm-hmm. That's all I can think of. And I remember sitting with Amy like this, this may not be for me, you know. And I would get, it was like, may not be for me. I did not understand cards. Full transparency until um, maybe I want to say, and, and, and by understanding cards, I mean, reading right. the energy of the cards yeah. until maybe like last year. Okay. And when I say like until maybe last year, I mean, I studied cards. I have a lot of decks of cards. I love different decks of cards because different cards say different things and they get, they open up like this, this world around the energy of a card. Yeah. And which is like what makes, let me say, I'm not going to say it, but like there are some cards. I even, so I'm in art class art design in college and um, we had to upload five uh, pieces of art that would describe how we like art and I always say I'm not like a hand drawing artist but I'm a very artistic person I have a great eye and but I can't barely draw a circle that connects but I got (laughs) a great eye (laughs) Um, and so I took a picture of one of your cards and we had to explain why we chose the five designs that we chose. I chose um, an interior room because I like interior design. I chose a little fashion sketch of an outfit. Um, I chose a ceramic. I chose a watercolor and I chose one of Yolanda's cards. And, And I wouldn't say it's my favorite card in the deck, but it's a very top card. And he's like, why did you pick this? We actually just did last semester a tarot card assignment where everyone had to draw mm-hmm. like they're all so mad. I'm like, why did we do that this year? Um, anyway, I said, I love a card that, or I love anything that speaks. And there is something about the cards in this deck that I don't know if it's maybe because, you know, Yolanda... And, and have channels a lineage that speaks a language that I understand. And so when the homegirl did the paintings of the cards, um, it was just in a language that I understand. Or if, I don't know. <laughs> but these cards, when I tell you, it's almost as if they move, right? It's almost like I look at them yeah. and like right now I see the seeker in my mind, right? And he's sitting on this bed, like slumped over with this like cobra on his back, this red bag sitting behind him, right? And it like, I literally see him moving, right? I see him being hypnotized by the possibility of what is to come, right? I see, I literally like in motion, there is something that happens. And I, anyway, my point is, I realized that if I looked at that card and I just saw the fool, I am absolutely not understanding right. the meaning of what reading is, you know? But that's exactly why I want you to be a part of the next class because I would always remember, uh, Amy, I would be like, what? Like the things that you would see uh-huh. would just like blow my mind. But even just the way your interpretation, I mean, to the point you guys where I was like, can you just write the guidebook? Because <laughs> you <laughs> I'll That's just write the guidebook. Yeah, she was that having that, but um, yeah. So anyway, just so you know, you will be a part of the next Oracle School. However, we have to work that out. 
I will do it. I am willing to pay in full. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, so that we don't have an episode three right away, I'm sure we'll come back together because this feels so good. I missed it. Oh my gosh. I just want to know if you can leave everyone with a some like little nugget of your own wisdom through all of this. What do you really recommend for people from your own experience? What do you recommend for people who are frustrated with their healing or people that are just like, how do I own my healing? Like what has been talked about? Anything that you think would be helpful to someone who feels some kind of stuckness or confusion around what this work is for them and how it works for them? I would say just keep learning. If you're feeling stagnant, if you're feeling stuck, if you don't know what to do next, pick up another book, go to another person, try another healing modality, yep. do something that you wouldn't even think you would like, just try it. And I think that's part of what makes all of us unique is we continue to learn. Yeah. We continue to read and to try these different modalities and something will strike us. And then you can start blending them you know, and just keep doing more, keep learning more. Um, I would say come into your body. I think sometimes we want to say, stay so high on spirit. And what we don't understand is that it has to go somewhere, right? If you're stagnant or feeling like nothing's moving. I remember I was feeling like that not too long ago and I'm, <clears throat> I'm always, I'm always up here. Okay. Um, I was feeling like that. And I want everybody to give me a round of applause because September 3rd, my progress son moves out of Aries. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Put an applause um, track. <laughs> but come into your body, right? Um, like I was saying, like this message that I got was like, oh, you keep saying that you manifest and you manifesting. Sometimes the manifestation is the action, right? And the action is a mundane, tangible, in person. It ain't God's not doing it. You have to do it. And that that part might be where you're stuck, right? It's easy in the liminal space to be scared to step over the line, right? But all that you've been praying for in this liminal space is on the other side. And the manifestation that you have been praying for in, the li in this liminal space requires you to take the action to receive the manifestation. Sometimes that's all it is. And, I, you know, I'm saying this right now. And I'm like, I know. Um, <laughs> that's like, that's what it is. So come move your body, like go walk, right? Like, what are you feeding yourself? What are you watching on TV? Like how much of other people's lives are you consuming? How many messages do you need to hear before you understand my goodness, I've been living everybody else's stuff and I have absolutely no idea where I'm at right now. Come into your body. That's what I have to say about that. And period. So <laughs> we have... Obviously, I mean, like so many reasons and the beauty of why we should be in connection to ourselves, be really into body. And then no surprise, of course, with aims to feed that mind, make sure that you're constantly um, staying curious. I mean, that's really, honestly, both of those things I think are so important. I have had to work more diligently on the being and body part. The curiosity is easy as hell for me. I'm calling, you guys know, like, listen, I'm looking at my bookshelf, like what? Girl, <laughs> stay curious. Yeah. But the being in my body is something I have to consciously choose like every moment of every day. And I had to come into relationship with myself to recognize when I'm not and when I'm starting to float and bring myself on back. So I think one of the things too, just like you were saying, how energy is so important to understand. It's really important to be in observation and start to understand yourself. So you even know how and when I need a shift and change. I need to redirect my mind. I need whatever I need. I need space. I need a hug, <laughs> like whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I definitely want us to come back and have a conversation about so many things. So I hope you guys will come back, but before we go, can you let everyone know, Ames, I know you have a lot going on now and Amy will also be um, a part of this year's 
Reiki Ray's Global Summit. So you can see her interview there. Uh, what else do you have going on for people who want to connect and work with you, my love? Oh, thank you. Um, they can check out my events and happenings and retreats on my website. It's amysagereiki.com. And I have on October 21st, it's a Saturday. I'm co-hosting a one-day retreat all about journeying through the chakras. So it'll be a really fun, interactive day. Wait, what Yoga, day is that? Um, October 21st. Okay, this will be out before then. Yep. Um, so there's that happening. And then, of course, Journey with the Moon is an ongoing series. I co-host all about the moon phases, Zodiac. We go through rituals. We have something um, special to do and gifts. And that's been a lot of fun to do, creating community with that. A lot of people learn from each other and meet new friends. And, um, of course, my Reiki sessions and my sound bowl sessions. So check me out on my website. Everything's listed. Thank Amy. you for letting stagereiki.com obviously i will have that down in the show description but it's pretty easy to remember amy sage reiki.com and beautiful d whoo the iterations my love and what she's been concocting can you share with us what's new in your zoo yeah mm -hmm. so i am proud and happy to say that um i am opening up a community <clears throat> It will be at um, a side of self.com, like a side of self. Um, mm -hmm. And it will be readings, but I wanted it to be collect. I wanted it to be a community. I wanted it to be people who chose, who choose to be there. I didn't want to like go on YouTube and do it or anything like that. I just felt like that was a lot of exposure for me, baby <laughs> steps. So um, I'm opening up a community. Um, it will be, you can read, you can read about it. It'll be blog posts. It'll be, um, weekly Sunday sessions where we get on, we do a reading. Um, we talk about what's going on planetarily speaking, what we should be planning for, what, um, our, um, guidance is for the day or for the week, you know, just like that kind of collective life planning re it's like going to church hello right? so i give you that <laughs> reboost for the week um so that'll be on a side of self.com perfect so a side of self.com of course again it's going to be down in the show description so you can connect with deandrea I know the three of us will be back again soon. So if there is something in particular that stood out to you in these episodes that you want to hear more of, if you have questions for us, of course, you can reach out to DeAndrea and Amy. You can also email me. Let me know what your questions are, what you would like us to talk about next time. Um, if you want to work with me, just go to theenergeticalchemist.com. I have the Alchemy Circle, which is ongoing and you know, I already ordered my planner for next year. Of course I did. Uh -huh. So I already have classes that are planned for the end of this year and into 2024. So if you're on my newsletter, you will get um, all of that information in October. So I have to thank you lovelies for just taking the time to have a two hour conversation. <laughs> Thank you to everyone for being here. Hopefully you all enjoyed this. I'm sure you missed them as much as I do. I love you both so much. I love you both too. I know. Love you. Love you. All right, babes. See you all next time. Bye for now. Okay, beautiful alchemist. Thank you so much for tuning in for this two-part conversation with my beautiful friends, DeAndrea and Amy. Again, if you would love to connect with them, you can connect with DeAndrea and her work, what she has coming up. Her website is asideofself.com. If you would like to connect with Amy and learn more about her sound bathing and her beautiful Reiki retreats, you can go to amysagereiki.com. And the links to connect with both of them are down in the show description. Of course, to connect with me, go to theenergeticalchemist.com. I am very thankful that 
they are both open and willing uh, to come and have this very honest conversation here with you uh, because I think it's an important part of community and this work. You know, we talk a lot about the technical stuff, you know, the techniques and the how to, but I think it's important for us to hear the vulnerability and the effects of what happens when we all apply these techniques and go deeper into the study of the philosophies and the principles of whatever it is that we may all study, something's going to move. Something's going to change. There's going to be an experience. So I just want to thank Amy and DeAndre for coming and being so open here today. Again, I hope that, you know, it speaks to you or if there's someone else in your life, you think that this conversation would um, be beneficial for them to hear, please do share it. And that is it for now. Thank you for being here, beautiful alchemist. Remember to always journey in love.